This is the yes button. This is the no button. Do you agree with this statement? Many of you will of course instantly say Yeah, that's correct, Mr. Low Effort Robot Avatar. And yes, that is correct. Today, here, now, in the present. But it wasn't always so easy. You see, the history of menu navigation on game consoles was anything but straightforward. Yes, even the menu navigation on PlayStation. What if I told you that the circle button was not always the no or back or cancel button? What if I told you that this trend was only adapted after the Dreamcast and after the Xbox established this button mapping in the Western world? And also, where the hell did the start and select buttons go? Why did they ever even exist? Well, let's start from the beginning. And trigger warning, I will refer to this button as the X button not cross because that's the correct name for this button i don't care what sony says just like this is a gif and not a gif generation 1 consoles or gen 1 for short are extremely primitive systems none of them even had the ability to buy additional games they came with pre-programmed games and that was it Menu navigation on these consisted purely of either a button on the console itself, or in the case of the Magnavox Odyssey, these little circuit cards that act like electronic switches to change the rules of the game. There aren't actually any games on here, just circuit boards with numbers on them that connect different pins. Does this even count as menu navigation, especially since these cards also turn on the console when inserted? And because the Magnavox games especially can hardly even be called video games. Most of them are just board games with some really bad TV overlays and three glowing dots for which you had to agree on abiding to the rules with the second player because the console was so primitive that it literally couldn't keep score and couldn't keep the player from cheating in the games it came with. The Angry Video Game Nerd has a great episode on the Odyssey by the way. You should check it out. Well, you decide if that's menu navigation. The second generation, or Gen 2, made things more complex, with systems like the Fairchild Channel F, which was the very first console that actually used game cartridges with additional games on them. But it also came with a built-in Pong clone, like every damn console at the time. In this generation, menu navigation was still basically buttons on the console itself, and not so much inside the game. On the Channel F you have four numbered buttons, and a reset button. Without the cartridge, you simply select which flavor of Pong clone you want to play by either pressing 1 or 2. Let's press 1 for hockey. And then, um, no idea what S means, so maybe sound? Uh, let me press 2. M. Uh, okay, let's randomly press 4, I guess. And there we go. You can rotate your pedals by twisting the knob on the controller and even move your goalkeeper by pushing the knob in or pulling it up. Pretty cool Pong variant, this hockey game. If you actually have a game cartridge like this one here, the instructions on it will tell you what each button does. So, after resetting the system, it shows a G. Here, we choose the speed of the car. Let's just press 1 here. Then, you choose the mode, M for mode, makes sense, and I'll take the no stall at start mode by pressing 2. Lastly, S for sound, 1 is off, the rest of the buttons turn it on, so I press 2 again. Here we go. I have absolutely no idea what is happening. All I can do is switch gears, no idea how to win. On the Atari side, it was much the same, but instead of buttons, you had switches. And following the instructions of the game, the mode switch would change difficulty modes like making pedals smaller and some games actually use these as additional buttons since the 2600 joystick only had a single button. Which I assume made some games like Ghostbusters really annoying to play on this revised model of the 2600 since in that game the difficulty switches were used to activate traps and for menu navigation at the start and on this version of the console those have been turned into tiny switches on the back of the console. On the ColecoVision and the IntelliVision meanwhile the controllers were 90% keypad which gave ample opportunity for developers to not only add overlays for more complex games than what was possible on the 2600 and the Channel F 
F, but also made the Channel F style menu navigation possible directly on the controller, instead of having to press buttons on the console itself. It wasn't until Generation 3 that console games regularly had in-game menus, and because that was now a thing, the console makers thought about how to do menu navigation on those simple controllers, when the consoles only have an on-off switch and a reset button. So Nintendo came up with the SELECT button. Yes, that is why that button is called SELECT, and the other one is called START. These are meant for menu navigation. Pressing up and down on the D-pad to select the menu option wasn't a thing in early NES games. You pressed select until you have the menu option highlighted that you wanted, and then pressed start to select that menu option. Which, uh, thinking about it, sounds counterintuitive. Maybe these should have been called switch and select instead. But later NES games, through the influence of the Game Boy and Super Nintendo, actually already used modern Nintendo menu controls. Kirby's Adventure here, released in 1993, lets me select my save file with the D-pad, pressing B brings me back to the start screen, and pressing the A button selects a save file. So basically already modern Nintendo. With the Super Nintendo, and Mega Drive, which is the real name of the Sega Genesis, some games still used Select and Start for menu navigation. But at this point it was very common to select the menu option with the D-pad and then choose an option by pressing the A button or Start button. The Mega Drive didn't even have a Select button. Neither did its predecessor the Master System for that matter. Hell, that one didn't even have a separate Start button. The one button was the Start button on that thing. Meaning, yes, on the Master System, the D-pad was commonly used to navigate menus and the one button was used to select a menu option. Kind of forward thinking if you think about it. Too bad they put the pause button on the console itself though. But how cool were those PC engine like card games, huh? Speaking of the PC Engine, or TurboGrafx-16 for the Yankees among you, that system was a weird in-between thing. Technically part of Gen 4, but with tech that was partly stuck in Gen 3. The controller reflects this as well, it basically resembles an NES controller. But with different button labels, instead of start we got run for example, but select is still select. And the 1 and 2 buttons have turbo sliders, third party features on a first party controller. Amazing. That system, being an in-between system, had some games that went the old NES way of menu navigation, some that went a more modern way, and then some others that allowed for both. In general, the PC Engine has a library where early games feel and play straight up like NES games, and later games feel and play way more like SNES games. A very interesting system. Also, best Castlevania. Anyway, it definitely was the Super Nintendo that cemented the A is yes and B is no menu navigation setup on Nintendo consoles. All subsequent Nintendo consoles used these two buttons as their yes and no buttons, right up until today. So even though the A and B buttons moved around a bit and changed colors multiple times until coming back to their SNES formation nowadays, A was almost always yes and B was almost always no in 99% of all games. But now let's actually get to the PlayStation in Gen 5. The generation when Nintendo betrayed Sony, which made Sony very very angry, who then said, fuck you Nintendo, and made their own console, the PlayStation X, which they then shortened to just PlayStation. The X was a remnant from when it was still an expansion for the SNES. Like the PSX was the shorthand for the broadcast settler view, the X in PSX likely stood for expansion, but it is debated what the X in either of their names stands for to this day. If we look on the controller of the PlayStation, especially if we look at either the Dual Analog or Dual Shock controllers, we see that it is basically already the modern PlayStation layout. All of your buttons are already there, and up until the PlayStation 3, the only change that happened was that L2 and R2 became triggers, and the analog mode was replaced with the PS or Home button. So the younger generation watching this might think that surely the menu navigation question had been already solved now, right? Yes. But the question Sony developers asked themselves was, which buttons do we use to say yes and no? On Nintendo, you could associate the A button with the word accept, and the B button with the word back. So that made sense. 
Also, the A button was on the right, which is usually the way forward in games up until that point. Mario runs mostly to the right, so does Mega Man, and the B button was to the left of it, so that makes sense, as going left meant going backwards in most 2D games. For Japan, the home nation of the PlayStation, Sony looked at the SNS controller, copied the layout, and put a circle where Nintendo had the A button, and an X where Nintendo had the B button. Because in Japan, an orange circle symbolizes yes or correct, and a blue X symbolizes no or incorrect. But Mr. Low Effort Robot Man, that's the wrong way around! Of course, many of you will know that in Japan, this was always the default yes and no button mapping on PlayStation. Every PlayStation used these two buttons in that configuration to be used as yes and no buttons in menus. Here is the Japanese system menu of the PS1, and indeed, if I press circle, I can select the CD player here. And pressing, um, um, oh. Turns out, in the PS1 system menu, all the face buttons do the exact same thing. The shoulder buttons and start and select buttons do nothing however, which should make you wonder why they are even called start and select in the first place. Weird. Okay, forget that. The point is that all the PlayStation buttons on the PlayStation controller do have a meaning. The X stands for no, the circle stands for yes, the triangle symbolizes a vision cone. and the square represents a menu or map. Many JRPGs indeed used square for menus and maps. And like Metal Gear Solid shows, indeed, circle is used as the yes button and X is used as the no button. Many of you will however know that this is also the case in the western version of the game. And that's the crux of it all. On PS1, menu navigation was all over the place. Many Japanese games actually stuck to the circle is yes and X is no scheme. But western games did not. In fact, in the West, a completely different layout started to be used by developers. Because see, in the West, X and Circle do not have the same connotations as in Japan. A circle doesn't really mean anything to us in this scenario. And an X can be both a symbol of selecting something, like when crossing out a box on a list, which we usually do on a ballpoint pen with bluish ink, or it can mean something is wrong when using red ink. And notice how the PlayStation's X button is blue? Here is the Japanese version of Spyro the Dragon by Insomnia Games, a PlayStation 1 exclusive game published by Sony themselves. I am in game here, and now I pause the game to open the pause menu. This menu item here is the options menu. How do I select it? The X button selects it. So you might think, Mr. Robot, this is exactly like we know it today. How is this noteworthy? Well, first of all, this is the Japanese version of the game. And secondly, how do you think I go back from here? Which button do I use to do that? And with this, we arrive at the entire reason I made this video. I go back by pressing the triangle button. Yes, you have seen this correctly. X selects an option and triangle makes you go back. Triangle also lets you look around, but I'm not sure if Insomniac knew about the whole triangle equals vision cone thing to be honest. It might be a coincidence. After all, it didn't bother with the menu symbolism either. Here is the North American version of Crash Team Racing. And here you will also see that the X button lets me choose an option, and triangle lets me go back. Both buttons even make this yes and no ding sounds. Triangle was the default no or back button in many if not most western PlayStation games. On PS1, some of them, like Crash Team Racing here, also used circle for yes and square for no. This wasn't universal however, and on PlayStation 2 became less and less common. PS2 you ask? Yes! This setup of X equals yes and triangle equals no was the default western menu layout on PlayStation 2 as well. Games like Metal Gear Solid 2 however, and some other Japanese games didn't bow to the West, so they just kept using Circle is Yes and X is No, which was now the Japanese standard menu layout. During the PS2 era, um, wait, if we go there, I first have to do this. So during the PS2 era, three other consoles existed, some longer than others. And all of these three consoles had a very straightforward menu setup. All of them followed the button mapping that Nintendo decided to use since the Super Nintendo. 
but all of them move the buttons around a bit. For all three of these, A meant yes, and B meant no. In 99.9% .9 if not 100% of games, Nintendo and Microsoft also correctly thought that it might be a good idea to use traffic light colors for these two, because nearly the entire world understands that green equals yes or go and red equals no or stop. So the green A button meant yes, except go, green light, and the red B button meant back, no, stop. Sega didn't get the memo and more or less chose these colors at random I assume, because I don't see any rhyme or reason behind this color scheme. But hey, at least they also agreed that the A and B menu layout is the best. Nintendo's colors were all over the place in the past. All red, then this one, which for America was changed to cool early 90s purple on all buttons, and then on N64 they did this, for whatever reason, but while their buttons might have had a color identity crisis, their place in menu navigation was found very quickly. Many might wonder now, what did Western developers had in mind when they settled on X as the yes and triangle as the no button? Well, I can only speculate, as it's not as clearly laid out as the the Japanese button scheme, but I assume that we can all agree that the X for yes does make sense knowest. You are crossing the option you want on a menu, makes sense. For triangle however, we definitely have to speculate. My theory on this is that triangle looks like an arrow up and if you ever used a computer you will be familiar with the up arrow because the up arrow will bring you to the folder above your current one. So you go back one folder. This is my theory. Maybe you have a theory of your own. Write it in the comments maybe. It's weird. Triangle was the main backslash no button for so long, yet many people I spoke to recently, even the ones that lived through that era, seem to have completely forgotten about it. In their memories, circle was always the back button. Kinda weird, but that is why I made this video, to remind everyone about the triangle button, and what role it played in the history of the PS1 and PS2. So when did this all change then? How did we arrive at the current layout, where X is yes and so circle is no, which makes no sense if you think about it. Why would a circle be the no or back button? Maybe western devs had it right all along with the triangle button. Well, look at the PS2's main competitor, the Xbox. On Xbox, it was all basically standardized in 99% of games. The A button was yes and the B button was no. Fun fact, the Xbox didn't have start and select, instead it had start and back. And indeed, the back button could be used in menus to go back. Would you look at that? I bet there are games that didn't support this way of menu navigation, but I have not encountered one. Although I haven't tested it on that many games, given A and B are way easier to reach even on the original Xbox controller. I'm currently demonstrating that using the backwards compatibility on the Series X, where back and start are mapped to view and menu respectively. And yes, that is indeed the name of the double square and hamburger buttons. View, menu. Meanwhile, start and select never really made sense on PlayStation, as you never select anything with the select button, and almost never choose an option with the start button. These two button labels were already outdated. Nintendo got rid of the select button as far back as the N64, where they now just had a start button, which was then changed to the start slash pause on GameCube, which makes way more sense, I hope you agree, and then on the Wii, it's turned into plus and minus. With the Wii U, they also added start and select to the plus and minus buttons for a secondary label, which was weird, but now on the Switch we are back to just plus and minus. Yay. But back to how Circle became the no button. Well, Sony looked at Microsoft's controller, which had the same basic layout with four main face buttons in a diamond shape, and then decided to just adopt their standard, which they did starting with the PlayStation Portable. Or did they? Because let's take a look at the PS2 system menu, shall we? Here is a Japanese PlayStation 2 system menu. As you can see, it conforms to the Japanese Circle is yes and X is no layout. But if we go to the western system menu, what do we find here? X is enter as we can see. And once we enter the configuration menu we see that circle is back here on PlayStation 2 in the year 2000.
we already see the modern menu navigation layouts that we all know from the PlayStation 5. So why did it take until the PSP to become also the default inside of the actual games? Why did triangle equals back stick around for so long? Weird, isn't it? It seems that Western devs coming from the PS1 just kept using triangle when developing early PlayStation 2 games and did not bother adjusting throughout the entire run of the PlayStation 2 console. Well, almost the entire run. Because you see, there were games that released on both the PlayStation 2 and the PSP. Here is such a game, Wipeout Pulse, originally a PSP exclusive. But PSP exclusives were used by publishers like Sony themselves to keep the PlayStation 2 on live support for as long as possible. The damn thing sold 150 million units after all. A lot of customers to sell PSP ports to. And in games like Wipeout Pulse, we see that developers really didn't want to give PS2 owners a heart attack by confronting them with the circle button as the new back button. On PSP, we see the modern menu navigation as we would expect. On PS2, the same game released one and a half years after the PSP version, we see that the triangle button is still there, living out its last few years as the back button, until it retired and gave the reins over to the circle button for good. But some PSP games and some PS2 ports of PSP games crossed the border so to speak. If we look at Motorstorm Arctic Edge, we see that both the PSP and PS2 use Circle to go back. The reverse is the case in Ratchet & Clank Size Matters, where both systems use Triangle as the back button. It was the great crossover period, not only for PSP games on PS2, but also for the two different back button systems. So with the PSP and ultimately in the home console space with the PS3, the western menu layout was finally decided upon by basically all developers. And so it was decided. X is yes and circle is no. Well, some Japanese devs still didn't want to play ball, but 99% of games did play ball and used X as the yes button. Fun fact! Did you know that in the Japanese version of Demon Souls and I think some of the later Souls games, the dodge button is actually X while it is circle in the West? Why is that? Because in order to not introduce unforeseen gameplay issues, from software to just flip the two buttons across the entire game, not only for the menus, both interact and roll are flipped outside of Japan. Then when the PS5 came out, Sony kinda gave Japanese players the middle finger and told them that they had to play with the rest of us westerners, and retired the Japanese X equals no and circle equals yes button layout over there as well. You're out. Now the entire world is united, with controllers where the bottom button stands for yes and the right button stands for no. Well, not the entire gaming world. Nintendo, being the oldest of the bunch, stuck to their roots until today. And so, we now all have to flip a switch, haha, <laughs> get it? Switch? Every time we play a Nintendo game. And remember that their accept button is on the right. And with that, this video ran its course. Like, subscribe, tell me if you knew about the triangle button or you forgot about it. Because the entire world seems to have forgotten about it, is what it seems to me at least. Bye.